Hello and welcome to another video in the course where we are learning about business strategy. In this video, we are going to discuss interactive competitive strategies. Well, what are those? In previous videos, we have talked about generic competitive strategies. That is more about of a how do we approach the business? Do we try to be the low cost leader? Do we try to differentiate ourselves? Or do we try to have a focused strategy? Now, once we are decided about our general business approach, we will now have to sort of react to what our competitors do, because for sure we are going to have some competitors around us. And that is exactly where interactive competitive strategies come into play. So we are going to discuss, for instance, a value line concept. I'll do it straight away, actually. This picture shows different organizations competing by either emphasizing prices or high quality. Graph on the left starts with a first value line describing various trade-offs in terms of price and perceived quality that are accepted by customers. The cause leading firm L offers relatively poor perceived quality, but customers accept this because of the lower price. While the relative positions on the graph should not be taken exactly literally, in the car market this cost leading position might describe some of Hyundai products. The differentiator has higher price, but much better quality. This might be Mercedes. In between, there are a range of perfectly acceptable combinations with the midpoint firm M. This might be Ford. In a competitive market, competitors are going to make moves and counter moves. At first, differentiator is going to rapidly improve quality of his product. This will cause a shift in value line, as you can see. This is an unfavorable situation for company M. He will decide to make a counter move and will rapidly decrease the price, hence affordability of his products. What we are left with is the red value line, which is much more demanding for competitors in terms of both price and quality of products than what we originally started with. What have you just seen was a typical example from market. Of course, in the reality, there are, say, um, a slightly more uh, dimensions along which the competitors can compete, but usually having these two price and quality of the product, uh, they are satisfactory to draw some business models and these two are pretty useful. Now, we are going to move on. We have seen how competitors can react to each other, which is an interaction between them. The very common thing that happens within a market, especially nowadays, is when there is a well-established firm and all of a sudden a low cost competitor arrives. And now this well established company or maybe several companies have to decide whether they will interact or react to the low cost rival. So let's look at it. This is maybe a simple questionnaire, but it's gonna answer us whether we should react to a low cost player that enters our industry. First of all, we start on the top left. We need to ask ourselves, will this company take away any of my present or future customers? If the answer is no, then we should watch, but do not take on the new rival. If the answer is yes, we should not launch price war. We should increase the differentiation of our products. We ask ourselves again, are sufficient number of consumers willing to pay more for the benefits I offer? If the answer is yes, then we should intensify differentiation by offering more benefits. Over time, we should restructure our company to reduce the price of the benefits we offer. However, if the answer is no, then we should learn to live with a smaller company. If possible, we should merge with or take over rivals. And we ask ourselves again, if I set up a low cost business, will it generate synergies with existing business? If the answer is yes, then we should attack our low-cost rival by setting up a low-cost business. If the answer is no, then we should switch to selling solutions or transform your company into a low-cost player. I think what we have just seen is a pretty useful questionnaire, especially at the very beginning of the questionnaire when we're asking ourselves whether if we create a low-cost business, 
whether that will be a successful strategy, how to counteract this low cost rival that can be seen all over the world nowadays. For instance, airlines, for instance, in Europe, they usually have their basis airline, the original one, the well established one, and then they purchase some low cost company and operate it as a separate low cost airline provider. As well, um, if some company uh, is unable to set up a low cost uh, sort of a uh, daughter company to itself, then it should transform its business and offer solutions and consultancy that is as well a pretty realistic example. There is, for instance, Ericsson and many other companies that were previously purely technological are right now moving also into a consultancy business where they rather sell the solutions and the knowledge that they have accumulated over the years. Now, for the last part of this video, I would like to discuss some other well-known practices to when it comes to responding to your competitors or especially responding to a low-cost rival. So, first of all, sometimes companies have to cannibalize on the basis of their success. What does it mean? Well, imagine you are a company that has been successful in the market for 30 years. You are doing the things the way that you have been doing them for a year, for five years, maybe for 15 years. And you are still kind of successful because so far you didn't have too many competitors. Now, all of a sudden, a competitor comes who is doing things differently than you. Thanks to that, maybe his benefits that he offers are higher or his costs are lower. Now, sometimes what companies have to do is that they have to purposely cannibalize on what they have been successful with. They really close down some business units that have been successful for 15 years because otherwise they would not be able to sort of persuade the people uh, that have been successful for 15 years that they have to do something differently. So it's a very aggressive sort of internal strategy to really say, okay, this was the success for 15 years, now we have to close it and do things differently. At, at least from my practical experience, this is a very common example where there is sort of a organizational inertia created and this inertia doesn't allow us to react to the environmental change, which is a competitor. Secondly, companies rather should do series of small moves rather than several big moves. Why is it so? Well, performing a big move is much harder, if, especially if you have a larger organization. It takes a lot of time and effort to make a big step when you are a large corporate. But if you do some small moves, if you do sort of incremental change step by step, that becomes much easier. Also, with this comes your competitor. If your competitor starts to see that, that, okay, you are doing a big move in this direction, you will for sure follow up with that in the future, he will know how to react to you. So you rather should do these small incremental changes so that the competitor maybe does not notice what is your main interest. Then we are touching already on the third point, which is about unpredictability. You should be unpredictable. Sometimes what companies do is that, let's say they have a main interest. There is a bank that would like to be the greatest bank in certain European country. While they are doing so, while they are pursuing this main aim of becoming the best bank in this particular country, they will maybe do activities in some other country as well, so that they are unpredictable and their competitors cannot guess that well which country is going to be their main focus in the future. Now finally, and this is maybe the most important point of this video, use cooperative strategy. I have seen many examples in the real world where it simply pays off more to cooperate with your competitors. It, it, is going to save a lot of costs for each one of these competitors. And usually if a synergy is created, I know that sometimes it, it might not seem possible that some cooperation would arise, but it always is possible. And if synergy and cooperation is created, always the two competitors are going to benefit more from it. And that is all from this video where we started to talk about interactive competitive strategies.